Good afternoon. You're listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. I'm your host, Dolores Weller, from the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition, also known as CVAC. Clearing the Air covers air pollution issues in the San Joaquin Valley and brings you interviews with individuals who are at the forefront of air pollution policy, advocacy, and research. And our show airs every fourth Friday at 3 p.m. and is hosted by CVAC, which is basically a partnership of uh, more than 70 member organizations throughout the valley and state that are unified in their commitment to creating clean air here in the valley. So for today's show, since this is January, we're starting a brand new year. We want to reflect on 2015, and it was a busy year for CVAC and and Valley Air Quality Advocates. So today my guest, Tom France, on the phone from the Association of Irritated Residents and in person here, Cesar Campos from the Central California Environmental Justice Network. They're joining the show to look back on 2015 and review the year's biggest air uh, quality issue. So thanks both of you for joining. Glad to be here, Dolores. Great. Had a busy year. Yes, very busy year. And I always like this show because, you know, many of you listeners, even some of our partners don't have the opportunity to be involved all year long. So this is a really great way to kind of hear what's been going on throughout the year. And um, Tom, Cesar, and myself, you can find us regularly at the air district meeting we're kind of like the the three musketeers tom will be in in the south valley uh bakersfield office Cesar and i are usually in the fresno air district office um you know providing public comment at air board meetings so um we encourage you to to attend those and you will definitely run into us um, so let's start off there. We're kind of not going in any particular order, but just, you know, kind of popcorn, some major things that happened in 20, 2015. Um, let's start out with the, the Air Board. Cesar, you want to tell us what's been going on with the Air Board? Sure. So um, we had several additions to the Air Board um, um, last year. The Air Board meets the third Thursday of every month um, more or less there's a couple of months where they take some time off and they don't meet um, but they are the 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 board that makes a lot of the air quality decisions that affect everybody in the in San Joaquin Valley so last year uh, we had several additions. We had a supervisor from the County of Fresno, uh, Supervisor Muddy, Buddy Mendez, that joined um, a Porterville City Councilwoman, uh, Virginia Garola, from Tulare County. Craig Peterson from Kings County, he is a supervisor there. Um, we also had an update to the chair. Um, the chair of the board is the person that uh, sort of sets the guidelines for public comment and things like that um, and that was Oliver Baines transitioned into that position Oliver Baines is a city council member in Fresno um, through CVAC I mean we had the opportunity to meet with uh, some of these uh, new additions to the board and we constantly and regularly meet with some of the other people on the board that are friendly to uh, environmental causes and are that have uh, uh, that tend to see the lens of environmental justice mm-hmm. in their decisions um, so we did meet with some of them I think you know to be completely honest with you Dolores um, there's we've been disappointed with some of the decisions that the new members have been making mm-hmm. uh, specifically around some key issues that we thought they they should decide it with community members on um, and they ended up siding with uh, what we perceive to be um, stronger interests um, so we did meet with Virginia Garola and I th- want to highlight her because I think that she is um, somebody that that needs a little bit more of education and that we can continue to work on um, so that her decisions on the air board reflect a little more of what we feel is best for the community Right, and you gave a, a, a lot of information on you know the composition of the air board, and they do rely heavily on on the air district director for for insight. And so some of these new members that are you know totally uh, you know not familiar with air quality technical information, they they heavily rely on staff. So it is a good opportunity for us to to engage with them and and give them a little education. Um, like Seth said, we meet we meet with um, 
Dr. Sheriffs and uh, Dr. Capitman, who are both appointed by the governor that are, that are also on the board. Um, but Oliver Baines, um, you know, I think he's in an interesting position. He's been getting a lot of pressure from his constituents in his district on other issues here, specifically in Fresno. And now he's the chair of the Valley Air Board. So I think this will be a, a good year for, um, you know, advocates kind of, you know, across the board, you know, air quality and other issues to really, um, you know, see what he can do. Yeah, and I mean, working with Baines in other capacities, I think that it's important to highlight that he's the chair, and so the ability that that allows us is that that um, he sort of sets the guidelines for public comment. And in, in most of the interactions that I've had with Oliver Baines, um, that is one thing that I'll say, is that he always sort of uh, takes the time to listen to community members and likes when there is a, a lot of participation happening. So I'm hopeful that that will be a good position for him in the airport. Definitely. So kind of going along with um, some of the other committees that uh, um, operate under the Air District, there is an, uh, an advisory group. It's the Environmental Justice Advisory Group that's been operating for about eight years at the Air District. And CESAD is, is one of the, the members representing Fresno. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there is a member representing each county of, of the Valley on this Environmental Justice Advisory Group. And uh, a lot of the the issues they deal with, for example, um, how the DMV fee dollars are spent in environmental justice communities. So they make a lot of recommendations on how grant monies are spent. Um, And so for the past eight years, they have kind of just operated on their own with um, reporting to another sort of subcommittee within the Air District. And CVAC really led uh, a proposal to to allow the EJAC to now report directly to the board. And so we see that as an exciting opportunity for the EJAC to um, really advocate directly to the Valley Air Board and raise the concerns that, that we've been um, you know, talking about for many years. We want to be able to see how, how the Air District dollars are really impacting the sp- specific EJ communities, not, you know, just the overall EJ fund. We want to see how they're invested in West Fresno or Kings County, um, you know, the EJ communities that are identified by Cal Enviro, for example. I think, I mean, the other thing to mention is that we also spent a lot of time last year um, working on the seats on the EJEG mm-hmm. and we started doing uh, pretty shameless recruiting um, of EJ advocates to join the the the, the advisory group um, and we did get a couple of new members uh, from the North Valley as well as from the South Valley that are really instrumental in that group and have led us um, in very important discussions about environmental justice. Yeah, definitely. So there's Kings County, we have Maricela Maris- uh, Torre from Kings County. We have Tom Helm from Valley Improvement Projects up in Stanislaus. Modesto. Modesto. Uh-huh. Um, Michelle Garcia representing Madera. Uh, so yeah, there's, there is a really good representation and now they have the opportunity to advocate directly to the Air Board. So um, we hope that they you know, really put it to good use for 2016. And, and to our listeners, if you are in Merced County um, or Tulare mm-hmm. Counties and do have an interest in environmental justice or have an interest on air quality in general, uh, this is a great way to start um, being engaged with the Air District. And so please uh, reach out to us and we can sort of guide you into how to join that group if that's that's something that you want to do. Definitely, yeah. Get in touch with us about uh, vacancies if, if you want to get involved in, in any way. Um, so that was the EJAC. There was something else that happened that got a lot of uh, media attention and that was, um, you know, pollution coming in from from China. And that got a lot of media attention. The Air District, um, you know, did a lot of, of press work on that. And uh, so, Sasa, do you want to kind of talk? I think you attended it, right? That's right. So I, I attended a few days of the trans Zone. This is um, uh, f- attending, it's for everybody doesn't know, this was a conference that was held up in, uh, in well, almost in Yosemite um, that the Air Board held last, last year. Um, the idea, I think, when they were p- 
putting this conference together, they wanted experts to come in and say, oh, you're right, this is a lot of pollu- you're getting a lot of pollution that is transboundary coming from uh, Asia and all of these other markets. And that is not actually what happened at all during the conference. Uh, I think that one thing to highlight of, of the, the, the conference is um, that there was a lot of experts there saying that that there is some, but nobody can really agree how much um, transboundary ozone is actually um, setting foot here in the valley. Um, but I do. I will say that the, the the good thing that the conference did is that it brought attention to the specific issues of the San Joaquin Valley, and so you had um, members of the scientific community from all over the world, really, um, in Yosemite talking about the San Joaquin Valley, and I think that that developed sort of a. a an interest from them to do more studies and to spend more and more time thinking about the San Joaquin Valley and I think that in the future this could potentially yield some good research about what this means for the San Joaquin Valley of course through CVAC um, we were really critical of this conference in general uh, because we feel that this, the the air district is not doing all that it could be doing um, in terms of reducing ozone that that they do have control over so spending so much money and such an interest in things that they can't really even control is a little problematic but i i am happy that there was a lot of scientists here uh, who can now focus on doing more studies in the valley yeah and i know that it kind of started out with a study that the air district funded i think it was through uc davis and so um you know the researchers they seem like they were kind of you know just uh repeating uh the air district director's kind of talking points um Mm -hmm. and uh, that's sort of spurred then the the three-day conference um and like you said we were always advocating for focusing on homegrown pollution and the epa the regional uh region nine epa administrator jared blumenfeld also said the same thing in in uh several uh, media outlets saying that you know they should be focusing on homegrown pollution and not not uh, you know Asia. Tom, do you remember what the percentage range was for for the transboundary ozone? Wasn't something like under eight percent? Uh, yeah, it, it's um, it, it's a pretty low percentage, if anything at all. Also, it's it's in the springtime when we don't really have an ozone problem, mm-hmm. and in the summer when we do, it, it, it's like insignificant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting um, because we know that we tend to have those those high spikes um, in August. So, so if they're expecting the the Asian ozone in spring, that that doesn't quite make sense. So that was definitely a hot topic. Um, the other hot topic, ha ha ha, is the fireplace. The fireplace <laughs> rule. That there was a lot of money going around, a lot of advertising. Um, Tom, do you want to talk to us about that? Yeah, sure. Um, the, the Air District did lower the threshold for when people can burn this year, and of course we've advocated strongly for that. But what we really want is a ban on all wood burning in the valley in residential areas. Uh, they won't even consider banning fireplaces in new homes at this time. Um, and they haven't lowered the standard for when you can burn to even what the annual average standard for fine particulates is. So they could go a lot further. And then they did something really stupid, I, in my opinion, by saying that if you own a wood-burning device approved by EPA, you can burn when the air is actually quite heavily polluted. And that was new this year. And uh, these EPA wood stoves, they're not really clean. Uh, They're cleaner than the old ones, but they still pollute the air. And um, so they're actually, by their new rules, making the air worse on, on the worst days. And then on top of that, and this tops it all, they're paying people as incentives to buy these uh, EPA-approved wood stoves so they can burn when our air is dirty. Um, and that, that needs another look. The public needs to basically start saying we can't afford to burn any anything in this valley any longer and start with fireplaces. Um, it's um, It doesn't make a lot of sense to spend millions of dollars with a good proportion of that funding going to people so they can burn wood in their homes and, and, and pollute their neighbor's lungs. So uh, we're, we're, we were pretty upset about that this year. 
Right, and so they threw about $7 million into it in 2014, and I can't remember if they renewed some, some more funding in 2015, but I know EPA um, gave the Air District $6 million for uh, some new tractors and fireplace upgrades as well. Um, and I just heard from a lot of residents in the Valley, for, uh, for example, at uh, Cesar's uh, Fresno Environmental Reporting Network, there, there's a really good example of, uh, you know, somebody who smells smoke in their neighborhood, they want to report it, and if the Air District doesn't know exactly the address... Um, they they won't go out there necessarily, and so it. A lot of people think this is a joke, and there was actually a doctor at uh, the last air board meeting that said that pretty much said that this is a joke. You know, I, I don't know who's burning in my my neighborhood. I've heard inspectors tell me that they're recommending people go out and figure out which house it is burning at you know nine o'clock at night to figure out which house and call it and you know call in the exact address. So it, it does seem extremely flawed and, and just a lot of money being thrown around um, for, for face value. Do yeah, and I, I mean, I, th- I think that enforcement is one of these key pieces um, that that we wanted to talk about with this rule uh, and all of this in, in investments that the Air District is making is that the, this rule is extremely difficult to enforce. And as Tom mentioned, it is incentivizing people to turn to the stoves because they'll get more burning days. And those burning days will actually happen when our air quality um, is really bad. So for people who suffer from from any sort of breathing ailment, this is the times when they'll when those symptoms will get exasperated. Mm-hmm. We've had cases like that where um, a couple of people have told us that there is just smoke in their neighborhood, and everybody knows this. I mean, if you if you smoke if you smell smoke in your neighborhood, you don't necessarily know the source of where it's coming from, but you do know that it is there, um, especially if you can breathe it. And so the air district is spending a lot of money on basically a a, a rule that is not particularly enforceable. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And if you're just joining the show, um, this is Dolores Weller with Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. And my guests, Cesar Campos from the Central California Environmental Justice Network and Tom France from the Association of Irritated Residents um, are on the show talking about um, the air quality issues of 2015. Uh, Another big issue in 2015 was uh, support for, for the biomass industry. Um, and I think that we kind of touched on this at one point on one of our past right. radio shows, mm-hmm. but maybe you can summarize that for me, Cesar. Right. So um, uh, I first probably have to say that the biomass um, industry is one of those industries that is currently um, no longer feasible. I think that a lot for a long time, um, some air quality advocates and even some regulators were talking about biomass as a viable option for generating electricity. However, since solar and and other types of energy generation have um, uh, been more mainstream, then there's been a lot of incentives for those. This is no longer really uh, an industry that is that is feasible in the valley. This plays a lot. This plays a role because a lot of the, um, the well, the air industry likes to say that a lot of the brush and a lot of the uh, biomass that is collected through agriculture in the valley ends up in these locations. We know that the majority of biomass that is actually burnt in the valley is not necessarily coming from agriculture in the valley and it's um, coming from other places like LA and so on. Uh, Nonetheless, there was a bill last year, AB 590, that wanted to use cap and trade dollars to subsidize some of the expenses for the biomass industry. Um, And this bill was one that the Air District, the Air Board actually talked about pretty uh, consistently, and the air board members um, decided not to not to go with it. But then the air district director um, decided to even support it, mm-hmm. even after that. Uh, we have had um, uh, sort of encounters with the biomass industry in several of several biomass um, facilities. One specifically in Delano, where uh, resident groups started reporting smoke for that for that facility, and in a period of about 
two or three months, we actually ended up getting like seven or nine, seven or eight violations against the facility. Wow. Two to them. three months, you had seven to eight violations. Right. And it was wow. just one of those constant problems that we always knew was there. Um, but we um, lacked some of the language on how to actually report it in a way that was effective. And once we learned how to do that, um, we ended up we were able to get seven to eight violations on that facility. It cost them over $30,000. That facility is now closed. Um, and we've seen a trajectory in which a lot of facilities are closing in the valley um, and this is not necessarily a bad thing uh, I think there's other things to do with the waste that is generated through agriculture uh, including like large scale composting and mulching projects that need to be incentivized more um, than the continuous burning of them through biomass Right, and um, more recently at, at the Air Board uh, meetings, the Air District Directors is sort of uh, uh, kind of, I, I don't know, maybe scaring the public a little bit and saying that, you know, if we don't support this this dying biomass industry, we're going to have to resort back to open burning. And so um, right now, all that they're putting out is either it's biomass or it's burning. And we, we're trying to to really push for some other alternatives to be explored. I know that they've had they have some ideas of long term, um, you know, healthy soil initiative. I think they called it, but um, you know, I don't see anything currently happening. And so it's either just biomass or burning. Um, Tom, do you want to add anything to that? To the uh, biomass. I I agree with Caesar that there, there are alternatives to burning, just like we shouldn't be burning wood in our fireplaces anymore. There's no reason to burn anything in this valley with our polluted air, and there are good alternatives to good, clean biomass coming from our agricultural fields, and basically it needs to be returned to the soil, and there's so many advantages to doing that. Definitely. Um, and. You know, the Air District has been very busy. We mentioned AB 590. The Air District was supporting that bill um, here in in California, and we were opposed to it. Um, But they've been pretty busy, um, you know, meeting with legislators um, here in in our state legislators and also with with Congress. And, um, Tom, do you want to talk to us about what they've been doing on on the the side of the Clean Air Act? Yeah, yeah. Well, as I had said, Red and the head of the Air District spent money meant for cleaning up our air to go to Washington, D.C. to lobby for changes to the Clean Air Act. And his idea was to, in his words, to modernize the Clean Air Act. And he gave official testimony, you know, to a congressional committee where he, he out and out criticized our coalition, the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition, for being unreasonable in our suggestions for cleaning up the air. He declared that the value of a life taken prematurely from air pollution in the San Joaquin Valley is really not as high as insurance companies calculate. And he stated that businesses in the valley are basically doing everything they can to reduce pollution, so they should not be asked to do more, even when the valley fails to meet clean air standards by the deadlines. He's really trying to eviscerate the Clean Air Act and say that we're doing our best, leave us alone, we'll get to clean air if it's possible sometime in the future, but don't mess with our economy, don't mess with our big businesses, we need them, they're more important than clean air. So basically, he went to Washington to protect the right of polluters to pollute in the valley and and to protect our economy over the health of residents. Uh, so it's, it's pretty outrageous that he's spending money, you know, that should be spent here on getting our air cleaned up to a lobby for such outrageous things. Yeah, and I know that every year they take an entire delegation of, you know, made up of, you know, various, like, you know, industry lobbyists and air board members, and they go to D.C., and then on top of that, then Syed, you know, has appeared um, in at congressional hearings as well. So quite a lot of um, resources and, and time are spent on on trying to, to change things, change the rules of the game pretty much. Um, and just just recently, I, I think they were they had just f- uh, approved like the final proposal, their platform for 2016, and they talked about some of the conversations they've had with um, with the Democrats and Republicans in Congress, and and uh, saying that Democrats were concerned that this would be kind of opening up the Clean Air Act, and I think that the Air District is, has made it very clear that 
what they're trying to do right now is kind of like a, a soft uh, first step, and they do want to open it up further. And so that's just, Seth, do you want to add anything yeah, to that? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, what's, what's interesting is that um, it's this is something that a lot of people would say that it's not even feasible to do this. I don't think that there's a lot of interest in Congress to open up the Clean Air Act. Um, at the moment for any sort of revision, especially not if it's all of the revisions that they're proposing are extremely specific to the San Joaquin Valley. And so I, I don't foresee that the rest of the country um, would open up a, a, a piece of legislation that has actually been very effective in cleaning up the air across the country um, just to meet the demands of the San Joaquin Valley Air District because of their lobbying strategy. Yeah, and um, just to give you an idea, I know there there were many groups opposed to this, including you know the the American Lung Association. You know, urged them to reject the the proposal. Um, who's also a CVAC member. Um, so just that's definitely something that that'll keep coming up this year. Um, and so we're, we're running out of time, um, but I just wanted to quickly remind everyone that you know in 2015 we did take 70 plus residents to um, Sacramento. And we opposed AB 590, was supported um, a couple other bills, SB 350. Uh, I can't remember all of them AB right now. AB 1071. AB 1071. Right. So we had a show on that before, um, and that's our annual event. And, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely keep you posted on, on uh, 2016 CVAC Action Day when we all head up to, to Sacramento. And we also changed the way the Air District... Um, plans that their uh, air quality uh, their air quality planning process um, and so it's for specifically for the ozone planning process that they're working on now and um, so thanks to our work we were able to have them organize an, an advisory work group and that's they're actually meeting on February 11th so if you I believe that's the date and so if you look on check out our Facebook um, page I'll, I'll post all the information there um, and then if you're interested in, in being a part of, you know, the circus at, at the Air Board in 2016, um, the next Air Board meeting is February 18th. And like Cesar says, it's the third Thursday of each month. And um, here on, on this show, on Clearing the Air, I really want to do a show coming up on, on biomass, really talk about it from kind of both sides, um, both, you know, sides of the spectrum, um, dairies as well. There's been a lot of new um, information out with new technologies and like dairy digesters, that sort of thing. So um, look out for our, our, our next shows. Our next show will be February 26th at 3 p.m., um, the third uh, fourth Friday of every month and uh, you can always check us out on facebook.com slash SJV clean air uh, thanks Tom from the Association of Irritated Residents and Cesar Campos from Central California Environmental Justice Network for joining the show thanks. awesome yeah my pleasure thank you I'm Dolores Weller from the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition and you've been listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM have a great weekend Sacramento.